Beecraft here with Motion VFX, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at masking with the shadow catcher feature in MO2. Now, before diving into the actual tutorial with putting this into some footage, let me go over the basic concept of what the shadow catcher is in terms of using it as a mask. I have a very basic MO2 scene set up here with a light, a plane, a camera, and a platonic. Now for this light, I did knock the intensity down, but more importantly here, I do have shadows enabled, and also I am in beauty mode. Take note if you're in construction mode, you do not see those shadows. So back in beauty mode, I'm going to actually hide this plane, and I want you to see that we do have a full platonic. Nothing's getting hidden. But what I want to do is I want to use this plane as a shadow catcher. You can see here that it is catching the shadow, but I also want this plane to block whatever's beneath it, whatever the camera cannot see. And what do I mean by that? If I hide that plane again, I don't want to see this bottom part when I enable the shadow catcher. Well, here's how simple it is. For the plane, we want to use it as a shadow catcher. So let's go ahead and apply a new material. In the material settings at the very bottom, where we have opacity, set the opacity mode to shadow catcher. Look at what happened. We do not see the bottom part of that platonic. So yes, the plane appears to be invisible, but it is still blocking what the camera cannot see. If that doesn't make sense, let's look one more time. If I set the opacity back to refraction, this plane is blocking whatever the camera cannot see. So with refraction set, if I come up here and I hide this plane, we can see the entire platonic. If I re-enable it, come back to my material settings, scroll on down to the opacity and set that to shadow catcher, now we are blocking the parts that the camera cannot see. And not only that, you can still see that that shadow is getting cast over here. Now let's see how we can actually apply that concept to some footage. And here we are in that footage. And the actual footage, if I hide the MO2 object, this is the actual video. The MO2 object is this UFO that's crashed into the shoreline and then we have these shadows getting cast here. Let's dive into that MO2 object. We have a camera, a creased surface, and the UFO object, as well as a light. The creased surface is the only piece that has a material applied. I'm going to hide that for right now. And upon hiding that, notice we do have more of this UFO crash scene. Just so you can see that, if I hide the UFO scene, we're back to pretty much our stock footage. But showing that again, we do have some extra stuff down here and maybe we don't want to see that. So we're going to mask it out. So let me show the crease footage again. I'm going to go to the material and I'm going to disable that shadow catcher setting for right now. I'm going to set it to refraction. So here is that crease footage in all of its glory. If I open up the crease footage, we actually have two objects in here. They're essentially the same, but they're in slightly different positions. I'm going to go ahead and hide each one individually and you can see how they disappear from the scene. Take note that both of these surfaces are inside of this group and we've applied that shadow catcher material to the entire group. So essentially it's affecting everything inside of this group. When I show this one, notice we're blocking off the bottom part of that UFO object. And I'll tell you what, with just this one piece showing, I'm gonna go back to the material settings and I'm going to re-enable the shadow catcher. So let's take note of what's happened here. If you recall, we did have more of this object showing but now that we have that shadow catcher over it, it's hiding those parts down there. And again, to show that to you one more time, if I come back up here and I completely disable this group, we can see the entire object. But again, when I re-enable it, it's chopping off that part that the camera can't see. Just like I showed you in that quick scene back at the beginning of this tutorial. Now you may wonder why are there two up here? If I re-enable this one, it adds a little bit more of a shadow effect over here to the right. Showing that to you again. Notice the difference here. Re-enabling it. We do have some more shadow effects. Now, how are we getting these shadows? That's where the light comes into play. And I'll tell you what I'll do for this light. I'll reset its basic settings. So now the light is in the center of our scene. And based on the way this video looks, the light is over here to the left. I'm going to activate the control for MO2. Select my light. And I'm just going to use the 3D gizmo here to reposition that over here so that we can mimic that same shadow effect like we have right here on these rocks. So I'm going to pull it up some, slide it to the left, maybe push it back some as well. 
And as I do that, you can see the shadows are kicking in. And I'm gonna fine tune these positions here. And that's pretty much right back to where we had it. Some things to bear in mind as well, you can always come in here and adjust your light color, the intensity, the radius, but always make sure you have those shadows enabled. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Some things to note here, if I come back to one of these crease surfaces here, or both of them rather, and we start moving this thing around, we will start masking out more of that UFO object. And you may say, oh, okay, well we can see part of it here, and then we don't see it here, but we can see it here. That is because the camera can see both above this piece and below this piece. Just messing around with a few things here, if I were to actually rotate this, Though this is not the effect that we want, I hope you do see now that I've rotated this, we are completely masking out pretty much half of that UFO. Again, not the effect we want here, but I do want to show you how moving those pieces where we have the shadow catcher applied to can mask out our objects that we've added in MO2. Resetting those positions and rotations. And we're back to a very realistic scene where we've added an object in MO2, use a shadow catcher, and in all honesty, it really does look like it's part of this video footage. Let's look at the final result one more time. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials from Motion VFX, make sure to subscribe. And again, my name is B Craft. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.